we are not among those who shrink back and become lost. Paul challenges us with these words from Hebrews saying that we are the ones who have faith and who know that our entire beings are being preserved. So friends, whether you're lost or found, whether your heart is full of promise or your head is full of doubt, hear these words of welcome from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome home, children of God. Welcome home. Let us pray. Name unnamed, whose intriguing presence is closer to home than we dare imagine, fill us with wonder of you, that we may be filled with wonder of ourselves. Name unnamed, whose creativity is a river running, startle us with diversity, surprise us with difference, that we may be filled with wonder of others. Name unnamed, whose mystery and concern is revealed in Jesus, reshape our perceptions, reshape our patterns of living, reshape our politics and our prayer, that we may be filled with wonder of a world made whole. In your gracious name we pray. Amen. Friends, John's gospel tells us the story that after the resurrection, the disciples were locked up in a room, probably a hot and stuffy, maybe even a sweaty and maybe even smelly room, because they were afraid. They were trying to understand what the resurrection meant, and they saw what the religious authorities did to Jesus, and they were scared that the same thing might happen to them. And I imagine that after a few days, they started to get stir-crazy. And I know that when I get stir-crazy, I start to work myself up into knots. I don't know if you understand what that's like. Maybe you get yourself worked up into knots when you have to stay in the same place for a long time. But I just keep getting myself worked up and worked up and worked up. And pretty soon, I feel like I'm at the end of my rope. And John also says that Jesus came and he appeared to those disciples stuck in that locked room and he didn't offer them any explanations. He didn't give them a long sermon. It says that he breathed upon them and he said, peace be with you. I think that's one of the things that we can do for one another is to find ways to share the peace of Christ during these times. And I think we'll find that when we share the peace of Christ with one another, that's one of the ways that we can display courage. Now, courage is simply hope and love in action. And sharing the peace of Christ, especially when we're afraid, can take a lot of courage. But when we do, we might find that those knots start to come undone and we feel more at ease. Now I'd like to invite my friend Jack, who knows an awful lot about courage, an awful lot about faith, and even more about joy, to share a prayer with us. Go be in my head, go be in my heart, go be in on my way, go be in on my life. Amen. The reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20. A reading verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that day, 
the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The movie Boycott tells the story of the 1955 bus boycotts in Montgomery, Alabama. And there's a scene in which E.D. Nixon, one of the civil rights leaders, goes home only to find his family home has been bombed. And the police are slow to arrive, and Martin Luther King arrives even before the firemen do. And the camera pans slowly from the house in shambles, still on fire, to the firemen standing idly, not doing anything to put out the flames. And Nixon begins to question everything that's going on. He asks King how he can remain faithful to his nonviolent commitment and if he's picked the right strategy and how does he continue to have faith in God. And King answers slowly, almost painfully, and he says, we are not among those who shrink back and become lost. Quoting Paul, he says, we are among those who have faith and know that our whole beings are being preserved. Minister Anaya Watkins of Memphis, Tennessee, retells this powerful story in the context of the violence and protests back in the States three years ago, when so many of the gains of the civil rights movement began to be questioned anew. An ocean away and a pandemic later, our context is so very different, it feels, but her words still ring true. She says this, these last few years have felt like reliving the history of American racism. These collective experiences take their toll. I feel it in my body and in my soul, a sadness, a pain, a loss, a reopening of scarred places. And I hear it in the words of my neighbors, a sense of tragic loss, helplessness, fear, anger, those of us who count ourselves as people of faith have the challenge of maintaining this identity while also managing all of these feelings. We stand and we stare at the burning places and we wonder if we chose the right team, the right strategy. Pain, loss, anger, frustration, fatigue, these are all things that we're feeling these days. 
Thomas Paine said, these are the times that try men's souls. Although Paine wrote these words in 1776 and he was dealing with an outbreak of colonial rebellion and we'll leave that discussion for another week. We know that we're now likely facing at least three more weeks of lockdown and most of us at this point have been touched in some way, shape or form by this virus. Someone we know has lost their job or someone we know is in a care home and at great risk. Maybe we know someone on the front lines or maybe we know someone who's caught it or someone who has recovered. Maybe there's someone close to us in ICU whom we can't go visit or maybe someone we know and love has died. We're all being touched and tried by these difficult times In the days after the resurrection, John says the disciples were locked up for fear of the religious authorities and their souls were being tried. I wonder how they felt. Having chosen to follow this radical carpenter turned preacher and prophet only to see him crucified, only then to face the same fate, and then to have the tomb be revealed as empty, I can't blame them for locking themselves up in fear. Those are the times that try our souls. I think when King was standing before the wreckage of his friend's home, he was trying to say that our faith is not meant to keep us from responding to the violence and pain around us, that our faith is our response to the violence and pain around us. Thomas can be a model for us. He isn't being unfaithful, nor is he doubting. He's seeking and he's questioning. He wants to see, to feel, to touch. His faith is at play. That's the exact opposite of the doubt that he gets saddled with so often. Thomas doesn't shrink away. He simply stands up and says, I want the same experience. I want the same encounter as the others. Like us all, he is in need of the peace of Christ, to have Christ come and breathe peace into our frames, to have the love of God woven again and again into our awareness. Jesus doesn't tell Thomas not to doubt. That's a bad translation. Jesus tells Thomas not to shrink away, not to be stuck in unknowing, to be stuck in unbelief. He says, here I am. Don't think that I am not with you. Touch, see, feel, and he breathes. Peace be with you. And in doing so, he's saying that life is stronger than death, that love wins, that we need not be among those who shrink back and become lost. In each moment, friends, we can embrace resurrection even as God always embraces us. In each moment, we can affirm that love wins. We need not be among those who shrink back and become lost. We are among those who have faith and we know that our whole beings are being preserved. Even when the world seems to be burning down around us, we can have the assurance that love wins. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, go out into the world in peace, have courage, 
Return no person evil for evil. Rather, strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak and help the suffering and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all now and beyond forever. Amen.